Hey, welcome back to Ringworm, people of the earth. It's cold and it's been pouring for a couple days and it's gonna pour for the foreseeable future too. And I got like 24 hours sitting in the man cave, you know, working on the computer and trying to keep my toes from freezing. And I just need to get out here and do something. So you guys saw, I think it was the last video, I milled up that entire pile of cedar logs all into three quarter inch slabs. I figure the one thing I can do now without getting wet is set up my sawhorses inside the cabin here. Snap a ton of chalk lines. I think I, I think I bought an extra half gallon of chalk. I'll go through, I'll probably go through a half gallon of chalk, chalk line chalk, just making the lines on these. I pulled the generator over here. I'm not gonna use the chainsaw. Actually, it wouldn't really matter if I use the chainsaw. All these, the boards are gonna be horizontal. All the siding boards are gonna go on like this and then they get caulked in between. I think I decided in the last video I'm actually going to run a router over the edge of each board so there's a little chamfer edge on it. It'll just caulk in a lot nicer because you guys know all this lumber's wet. It's going to shrink a lot. It's going to have to be recaulked several times. The advantage of the circular saw is it just makes it perfectly straight and you get a square edge on it. So it's almost like it's almost like a real board. A real board? Yeah, I think they'd be real. Looks like with the uh, wind and rain the rain got in about, what, six feet from this side and a few feet from that side. No big deal. I'll just bring a stack in here at a time. Guess I'll set the sawhorses up there and we'll get to ripping. I've got two big piles. I think I showed you guys last time what I, what I ended up with out of all those logs. By the way, you guys know I love chainsaw milling. It's super fun. And that was really satisfying to spend, I think, five days in between bad weather just running the chainsaw and making all those three quarter inch boards. It was really, really cool to see these huge piles of lumber just waiting to be slapped together into cabin shape. But yeah, from a distance, you'd never know this is all made with a chainsaw. It almost looks store bought. The good thing is my wallet doesn't look like I store bought all this lumber. I can't even imagine how much it would cost. If any of you guys are interested, that pile of cedar logs you saw, I don't know how many it was, maybe 20 logs or something. It took two and a half gallons of gas to make all those so I don't know what that ends up being probably with oil like 15 bucks or something to make all that I mean obviously it took a lot of time from when I cut those down to getting them finished no they're not quite finished yet but a guy needs something to do with his days anyway so it's totally worth it super fun all right I think we got two hours without rain so drag some more tools out here start the generator snap some lines and we'll get this thing put together Isn't that beautiful stuff? Man. <laughs> I don't know, I was talking about half gallon of chalk. He's not coming half gallons. I don't, oh, they're two and a half pounds. Yeah, it'll probably take a two and a half pounder. That's more like a quart or something. I was just thinking, so this is, I know you're going to be amazed, Ryan, it's a Ryobi router? Yep, sure is. I don't know if you've probably used one of these before, but a little bearing has to ride on the edge of the wood in order to make the cut the same all the way along. And if it's undercut like this, I don't know if you can see that, the bearing will just sink right in there. So a lot of times when I snap the chalk, the chalk line, there'll be one spot, looks like this will be right about in the middle here. That'll be the smallest cut I take off the board. And I'm going to have to cut in at least far enough that it leaves a flat edge halfway down here. I don't know if that makes any sense, but if I just cut it like this, so it's right up to that edge, and then it'll come out here and end up being a big fat piece down there. But that's the, that's the least wood I can take out and make a straight edge on it. But if, but if I do that right there, then... This isn't gonna run on it. It's gonna be problems, so yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll just have to pull my cut back a little bit further, maybe like that. And if I'm when I'm routing these later on, if I get to the point where it's gonna dive in there, I can just stop here, don't do this part, pick up there again, and I can just use a knife to straighten that edge off. You know, it's really hard to tell if that made any sense to you, but uh I don't have any way of knowing right now, so uh alright, let's get going. Oh man. You know the downside of doing this in here? This floor is gonna be just solid blue from all the chalk that comes out of the chalk line. Ugh, I don't know if that's a problem. You've probably seen in other, other videos when I do a lot of ripping, a lot of chalk lining. Like my boots, my pants, and the whole area for a couple feet are just like, most of the chalk goes on the ground when you pull the string out. I do think that this is gonna end up being a subfloor 
at some point, but probably not this winter. Oh man, everything I drag through here is going to be blue. Yeah, I don't have the right size tarp to stick in there. And I don't know that uh, blue is the right color of carpet for my cabin. We'll just do it out here and maybe get a little wet. How many chalk lines do you think you've seen snapped on this channel? A couple hundred. Oh, you know, I forgot. I ordered these. What was the last thing I was ripping with the circular saw a whole bunch of? Might have been the floor. Oh, I think it was the roofing. No, you know what it was? It was all the framing for this place. I was ripping one and a half inch boards for two by fours. They were all wet and in the sapwood, the saw would barely go through. That's why I went out and threw my old skill saw away and got this Makita. The old saw could barely get through the wood. It was going, yeah, about the speed of grass growing. So I tried some new blades, that didn't help, got the new saw much better. But at the same time, I was trying to find a seven and a quarter inch blade that's just for ripping. I thought a ripping blade would be like, you know, the teeth would be more splayed out or something. Best I could tell, a ripping blade is just a really thin blade, so it takes out less wood as it goes through. The kerf is smaller. When I got these, but not until after I was done with the whole project. This is the only one I could find online, Bosch Edge, that said, just ripping and now that I get it it says general purpose but it is it is noticeably thinner than the other ones yeah it's quite thin so let's throw that on there and see how it works if nothing else I got two of them and they're brand new and they're not full of crap yeah look how gummed up those suckers are I've cleaned them off but that's what happens when you get pine sap really hot Whoa, you can't even feel it going through there. Who knows if it's the blade or just the fact that it's brand new, I don't know. The flat edge there is probably just enough to catch the router, maybe not there. You could trim it all the way back to here, but it'd just be a big waste of wood. You know, after trying out that uh, new planer last week and seeing how pretty all this wood comes out, I have had in the back of my head, not only like I mentioned that I'll probably plane all the cedar for the inside, I also think it would look amazingly ridiculous to plane all the outside cedar and varnish it, put like, I don't know, five, six, eight coats of varnish on it. There's absolutely no reason to do it other than, well, I mean, look at this. This is not the, this is not the pretty cedar I was saving. But it's still, if this ran through the planer and you varnished it, it would look amazing. All sorts of nice colors and stripes and, I mean, look at that red in there. There's some of that blue, green, gray. And this is just a regular old junk piece. I mean, not junk. I don't mean to insult the cedar, but it's just an average, average board out of an aver average log. And I guess if I had uh, like two or three more months before it snowed, I might consider doing it just because it's really screwy. <laughs> come walking up this hill here or four-wheeler and up the hill and see that thing completely finished varnished shining in the woods it would be so bizarre but it would take a lot of extra time and that's time I don't have right now I think uh, I saw day after tomorrow it's supposed to be 50% chance of rain every day all day so it's just kind of overcast and drizzly but I did say day after tomorrow there's a chance of flurries too we don't like those I mean I do like those but not when I'm trying to get this done so there's not enough time to do it, but 
you can imagine what it would look like your head and just be amazed. Yeah, ball. It's hail. It's trying to snow, but it knows better. It knows it's a little too early. That'll do it for the long ones. It's a pretty nice pile there. That ought to do at least a couple walls just in itself. It rained all the rest of the afternoon, all night. It's kind of nice. I like the sound of the rain on the tent. Got a little breezy at times, you know, with the summer tent. You could feel the wind going right through, but it stayed dry. It was quite nice. Luckily, uh, today doesn't look too bad until this uh, late this afternoon. So let's see, I just got this small pile left to go. Probably about the same number of board feet here to rip up, so it'll take the rest of the day. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, start wrapping and putting the siding on. Do you believe me? Because I don't. <laughs> I've been saying that for so long. really like this uh, darker red cedar. Isn't that cool? I don't get a whole lot of that out here. You know, <laughs> I just had a little thought going through my skull. I don't know if you guys remember uh, when I decided to build this cabin, it was like everything. I was like, ah, what the heck, I'll just build a cabin. Truly. There was no more thought given to it than that. And the square footage was, you know, within the range where you don't have to get permits or whatever. So this is basically close to twice the size of the man cave and without I mean I didn't think about any of this obviously but in the back of my brain I thought oh you know that'll be about twice as much material as that so it'll be a big building project probably take six months I completely neglected to think through how geometry actually works this is twice the square footage so that's the volume yeah the volume of the whole place is double it's not quite double the outside boards probably only was it square I'm not going to try to figure it out. Somewhere around 50% more uh, square footage of boards needed to cover the outside of this. I don't even know if I had decided I was going to insulate this when I built it. I guess, yeah, I guess the whole idea was it was for the winter. I didn't think of all the walls are doubled. So this has got to be somewhere around three times as much lumber as the man cave. Yeah, between three and four times the lumber. Is that right? Yeah, the building's twice as big and then the walls are doubled so it's a massive amount so anyway i'm looking at these red boards thinking oh i'm gonna save these these would be cool on the inside and then it just hit me i mean i also have to do the ceiling in there it's so much lumber it's a lot to make with the chainsaw by yourself <laughs> oh well i mean part of the reason i don't think this stuff out is it it doesn't really matter like what am i going to do with my time anyway this is what i like to do just cut a bunch of trees make a bunch of lumber Put it wherever it goes if i run out i go cut more trees i mean it kind of makes no difference if i spend two years building a cabin or one year building a cabin and one year building a ridiculous tree house or something but holy moly i wonder how much more lumber i'm going to need i'm kind of starting to think i'm going to need double what i have here <laughs> well that'll keep me warm this winter give me something to do
Holy schmoly. I did it. <laughs> kind of tired. Brought my uh, massage cane out here. It was been in my head like that to rip the lumber. My neck was just like, oh man, it's one big cramp. To stop every 45 minutes and like rub it out of there. Oh, that all came out great. It kind of looks like a uh, like an explosion took place over here <laughs> but i got through all of it that's fantastic that is a lot of really nice lumber as i was going i found a few really nice boards i set aside i don't know what i'll use them for but they were kind of too pretty just to stick on the outside of this actually uh i had a few more piles of pretty ones and maybe they got swept up in the in the chaos and put in the big pile so i'm gonna Get a snack, see what time it is, maybe a sleep, I don't know. It's got to be getting pretty late. Gosh, it is pretty out here. Sun came out for just a couple minutes and hit a couple of these trees. I don't have much in the way of hardwood. Hardwood's out here, but you can see a little bit of orange back there. It's uh, some kind of a maple tree. Otherwise, the aspens just kind of turn yellow. I don't get too much color out here. It's trying to be full-on fall, which up here is basically the same as winter. Oh yeah, look all the striped maples. These little guys are striped maples. They're all changing colors too. You see them dotted around here. Maybe tomorrow if I think of it, uh, if it's not raining in the morning before the wind comes up, we'll put the drone up and see if we can see any other fall colors around here. So nice right now. <laughs> no rain, partial clouds, a little bit of breeze, nice and cool. Love it. It's days like this that remind you how much it sucks to live inside. Tomorrow we're gonna, I, we're, I think, I think we'll start closing it in. We'll see. Well, I don't have any fully charged batteries, but maybe I got just enough to take a peek at some of these trees. It's awfully pretty. Yeah, it was really pretty. Be nice if there was a little sun peeking through, but it's always fun just to get a view what's ar what's around you, what the rest of the forest looks like, and not just this little tiny hole that I live in. Finally, finally it's time. Oh, look at that, perfect. I think I solved my problem of getting this all ripped off by the wind. I just had it in my head I was going to wrap the whole thing and then start on the siding, but I think I'm just going to do one wall at a time. So to use up the longest boards first, I'm just going to do this back wall. Plus, you know, I haven't done this exact thing before, so I'll probably screw it up and I'll get better as I go. So by the time I do the front, it should be looking pretty good. The good thing is these walls are going to be just like the man cave and I've never had a single leak come through there or the deer castle just with that horizontal cedar boards all caulked in. So I guess even if I do have tiny little uh, staple holes in here it should be alright. I will say I was a little disappointed to spend $15 a roll on packing tape, but this does actually stick to wet plastic. That's kind of cool. All right, I guess one thing I got to figure out is how far below this do I want to come and put the siding. 
I left all the live edge on the bottom of the frame here because I like that non-straight edge. It goes all the way around. So I don't want to cover that up. I guess maybe I'll find the shortest one and just bring the siding to there. I guess it only needs to come down a few inches. No sense in wasting cedar boards. I had to cut that house wrap off from here. I can't remember why. Oh, because I had to fix the floor. We don't have anything hanging over there. That's kind of weird. But we certainly want to overlap that edge several inches with the house wrap. You know, I'll probably let the house wrap hang all the way down. Put the siding like, I don't know, two, three, four, five inches down from there. And then I'll just run a knife under the siding when I'm done and cut the house wrap off. That seemed like a reasonable idea. I think that's what we'll do. Turns out somebody forgot to cover the other lumber pile last night and it rained a lot. I'm not threatening anybody, but uh, somebody's probably going to get fired for that. Let's see if we can find a 12 footer. Actually, it's got to be 12 foot three to fit all the way across the back. I hope I have at least one for each side. Wow, look at the color of those after they got rained on. That is something. I think that's just one log that has that color. I might set all these aside, save them for the inside if I've got enough lumber. Almost looks like bacon. Oh, bacon. Well, found some nails. Forgot to uh, consider that I'd need quite a few for the siding, but these are all galvanized and spiral of various lengths. I was just about to nail the first board in and I forgot that I was thinking about routing all these so that the caulk lays down in between them. I mean, it seems like it's going to take a lot of extra time to do if I route them, but it, it's actually faster than going through with a knife later and trying to cut them all out. Yeah, I guess we'll route them. Every board, every joint. Not going to make too much time to get them real pretty, but just a little edge like that, even if it's funky, it's all going to get filled in. I think that'll work really well. Probably look pretty cool too. This is the ultimate test of a battery powered tool. If I can do this entire cabin without burning this thing out, it'll be a miracle. I mean, I still haven't killed one of their tools yet, but I don't think something like this is meant to be used on a project this big, especially doing wet lumber like that in long stretches. We'll see. This is gonna look sweet. I mean, this looks like, <laughs> looks professional, doesn't it? <laughs> Oops. You remember uh, when I was putting the roof on this, all that talk about I've been out here for however long and I've only used two or three band-aids? Well, that just changed. I just doubled my band-aid use. Oh, yeah. I uh, stopped, ate some lunch, came out, cut a board, went to route it, and stuck my finger right into the router. Now you put your hand on here to keep it down on the board. 
and somehow I got my finger in there. Now it seems kind of improbable that that happened. But with that thing spinning, it's got a pretty sharp edge on it. It's kind of a good thing I had the gloves on. I mean, they were a little worn out, and I thought it didn't go through the glove, but it did cut right through the finger of it. Huh. Would have been a lot worse without the glove. Oh yeah, I could see exactly what I did, because I didn't have this straight into the board. I had it like that, and I just went to support the edge of it. Still seems a little nuts. I got... Yeah, no, it doesn't. If you're like this, you can keep it pretty, pretty level. Just turn like this, and you're pushing down on it. Yeah, that was my fault. I'm a big dum-dum. Oh, man. This is what I was talking about earlier. Where I haven't trimmed this all the way back to get rid of the edge of the log. The edge of the router has something to ride on here, and then it loses it here. There's nothing for the little bearing to roll on. I'm afraid I cut a lot too much. Oh yeah, I can see it dove in quite a bit. We'll see. I'll stick it on there and see how big that hole's going to be. Probably everything's caulkable. If you got enough caulk. Yeah, you can see. I don't know if you can tell. This is this joint's nice and straight. This one has some dives in it. Actually, both on this board and on this board, you can see right there it dove in. That's exactly why I do the back side first. We'll do this and then we'll do the far side over there and then get around to the stuff you'll actually see. I was kind of surprised that this went as fast as it did putting these all on here since you have to cut every single board on at least two sides. But uh, yeah, it flew along and now that I'm gonna have to do everything on a ladder, everything has to get put up and taken down at least a couple times. So it's gonna take a while now. This cedar is some uh, <laughs> some weird stuff to work with sometimes. It's so stringy. It usually, you push a router against the way it's spinning. So you actually kind of have to push it rather than it just jerking along. And you can't do that with this stuff. If you go against it for some reason, it picks up the strings and just wraps around the router bit. So you kind of got to put it into the wood and then hold on so it doesn't just suck you along. Kind of figured out how to do these spots too where it doesn't have anything to ride on. Basically, like, go to here, go to about here that way, and then just have to put a straight edge along there and let the router ride on that. Because I have ruined some lumber already. Actually, it's not ruined. I put it on there anyway. It's one of those things, once it's cocked in and you walk away from it, you'll never see it again. Look at that, no damage at all. What was this roof? 512? 4, 6, uh, I think it was 512. Always looks the nicest if you can get the last piece up there all in one solid chunk instead of having to patch it together. Not that anybody's going to notice. A 
see what my luck says. Oh, baby. <laughs> Perfect. Wow, that doesn't look half bad, does it? Looks brand new. Everything I build out here is so rough, that's gonna look really out of place. Might have to throw some knives at it or burn some holes in it or something to make it match. Just got a call from my dad. Says he's on his way here pretty shortly. I thought he wasn't coming till tomorrow, so take a look at getting this heater installed. Not installed, but we'll figure out the plumbing anyway. I think tomorrow we're gonna go out and buy some parts. I was gonna just start on this other wall, but I don't know. I don't know if I'll get around to siding it. It's gnarly weather the next couple few days. Ton of rain and maybe some snow. What you think? I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's getting there. Yeah. So. Wow. Is this where you get in? Yeah. Somebody didn't think to make stairs yet. Oh, geez, oh, so don't break your don't break your pretty neck. Wow, fine. Oh, cool. I just put that wall on in the last 24 hours. Well, yep, that's as far as I got. I think that's pretty far. Yeah, it looks uh, unreasonably nice on the outside. Like it came from a store or something. Just the siding. Because yeah. I ended up routing the edge of but every board. Did you, you sided the outside of it too? Yeah. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just tied it. Nope. Oh. No, that's what I did the last 24 hours, just do the siding. Wow. Doesn't that look professional? Oh man. Oh man. Oh, I see you built, you built the, uh, the edges too. Yeah, just so I can caulk it. Yeah. Oh, how cool. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a lot of work, doesn't it? Yeah, it is a lot of work. Making it out of, out of trees. It is a lot of work. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah, it's going to go, I think, in that corner. Did you see the connection on here? No. Is it? It's a little bitty thing. I hope it's enough power for this place. So it's going to be a, my big desk. It's going to be that whole corner. And I think I'll just go to the end of the window. And then somewhere right here, put the heater. Because on this side over here is going to be the bunk. Well, where's, where's the instructions for this thing? Well, I, I, I used them to start a fire. Shit. I am shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should install this in French, what do you think? We could. Yeah. I'll translate from German. <laughs> and then you just don't want the uh, exhaust pipe to go through a stud. Other than that, it probably doesn't matter. Huh? I believe that's correct. That'd be fine. Yeah. Pretty close there, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, so if, it's, if the pipe comes out anywhere in here, it'll be fine. We got free labor here today at the ring, at the worm. It is free, isn't it? Yeah, you you buy yeah, the tools. Well, you buy the tools, and I let you use them. <laughs> I'm ready to get uh, back to work here, put some more siding on, but we have a problem. It's pretty, but it's been going all night. It's definitely not going to stick, but uh, it's also not going to let up for a while. So I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Can't stand outside and make my French toast right now without getting too wet. Maybe uh, put my headphones on, listen to some music, drink, a, drink more coffee. I remember this day every year, the first snow. This is the first year that it really makes any difference because I'm actually trying to get something done. Every other year you just, you know, you know it's coming and uh, I don't know if I look forward to it, but I love it. I love the snow. Actually, probably better shake my tent off. And my footsteps from, from an hour ago are already covered up. Uh, I need a broom for that sucker. 
I think every tent I've had out here so far that's not my mountain tent has got broken poles at some point. Usually it's just like this, you know, it's, it'll snow for the day, maybe a couple days, and I mean, we won't get real snow for another month probably. And I don't want to put up a mountain tent in the summer. I mean, it's not the summer, but you know, before winter's really here. So I eke these summer tents out as long as I can and eventually they cave in and then I break down and uh, switch the tents out. Could just go back in there and turn the heater on and lay down for a while and all this would melt off. Oh, look at that, my huge thistle farm finally collapsed. Been dead for a while, I was kind of wondering how long they'd stand there. All right, that's all I can handle. It's so funny, no matter what I'm doing out here, I just want to keep doing it, everything. Whether it's sitting in the morning, reading a book, drinking coffee, I just, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to get up from what I'm doing, I just love this. And then I get up and eat breakfast, and I start working, I want to work till midnight. But I'm like, no, I gotta stop, I gotta eat, gotta get a shower before it gets dark. The shower I don't want to end, and then it ends. I run out of water, and then I go eat, and I don't want that to end, sitting there nice and warm in the man cave. But through it all, especially in the mornings, I really just want, like, can I just get a half a day where I don't feel like I need to go work? But then you get a day like this, you know, it's like one o'clock now, and by 11 a.m., I'm like, I can't sit in here anymore. I gotta get out and do something. So like a half a day off is about the max I can stand. So let's get back to it. Uh, siding, I guess, eh? It was crazy windy last night and looks like this stayed on just fine. So could wrap the rest of it. I guess I'm just gonna keep going with the siding because I really wanna try putting one of these windows in. So I only have, you know, four or five more courses and then I'll cut that window out. That'd be so satisfying to pop a window in there. My dad and I spent the entire day yesterday driving all over the place trying to find all the uh, pipes to put in the propane. I think we must have stopped seven, eight, nine different places to get this little this little corner we found, this 90 degree, and then we found this one foot piece of pipe here. We had to go back there to get a two, piece, two foot piece of pipe. It took the entire day. And he was gonna come out here and we were gonna put it all together and just at least mock all the pieces together, get them where they're gonna be, and then I could just throw it underneath and wait until the wall's done. But after three, four, or five hours of constant snow, he took off, so he's not here to help me put that in. Should be pretty easy now. We got it all figured out. Gonna do black pipe. Hopefully got all the pieces for it. I also have a splitter, so I'm gonna, just like the man cave, I'm gonna have two 40-pound propane tanks, and it's on a splitter that automatically flips over when one of the tanks dies, which would be, I think, really cool because this heater's gonna get used a lot. When the heater runs out in there, in the man cave, I mean, you notice it's getting cold and you go outside, turn one tank off, turn the other on, but I can't have that happening in here because this winter, when it's crazy cold, when it's in the negative 10, negative 20 degrees, the heater goes off for a few hours, all my water that'll be inside here will freeze. So we got that automatic changeover splitter, all the pipes, pipe tape, clamps, flexible hose for inside. Anyway, we'll probably get that, get to that in a couple weeks. You guys have probably watched me do enough of this. Maybe you get how I do this without cutting all the boards the same width, but I'll show you real quick. I mean, I don't know that, uh, you know, what percent of the people watching these videos watch them just because it's fun and how many people watch them because they think, you know, I might, I might need to try that someday. But you've seen enough chainsaw milling on here to know exactly how to do it, more or less, with just a $150 mill and, you know, whatever chainsaw you stick in it. So if you can cut some soft white wood trees, some cedar, some pine or whatever, you can make all your own boards. Then, you know, you can snap lines on the outside, cut the edges off with a circular saw or a chainsaw. I mean, use a chainsaw. Still, you need no electricity, just a chainsaw and a mill. And by the time you've done that, you realize how much work goes into just one tree and one small pile of lumber, so you won't want to waste anything. So this board is out, was the first cut of a very small tree, uh, but it's tapered like all of them. So I'm just gonna make sure that my break on this course is not in the same spot, as long as it's moved over one stud or however many studs, it's fine. And that looks like it's good. I try to stagger these back and forth. So the first course there, the fat end is on that side goes down to skinny here so the next one will be fat 
skinny and every five or so courses I'll check it with the level just to make sure one side's not getting way too high but this will go uh, I already marked it I'll just I'll put it right on this stud here I always I actually square these if you don't have house wrap on you can put a pencil on the back side and just run it along the edge of the stud and then you just take the whole thing and scoot it down so it's right in the middle go to that end take a pencil on the back side make a line and then you've got the exact uh, length and then I'll measure the end of this one where it is on the stud right here that's about five inches so that now I'll go look for another piece of lumber that starts at five and a tiny bit or around five inches and gets fatter as long as it gradually gets bigger at about the same rate this one does we can mark a line on the top of it we'll figure out the slope of the first board transfer it onto the second board and then you'll end up with just a smooth line all the way down if you were doing this on the ground you could take a chalk line run it from the start end of this right down the edge of it and continue it on it's really hard to do on a long a really long set of boards on the wall because the chalk line does tend to sag a little bit when you snap it it's not very precise so i'll show you how we do it here i just trim the ends of these it should fit there perfectly. I just realized this is a horrible place to be working right now. There's about an inch of wet snow on this roof and half of it is rolling off this way right here. I'm gonna be soaked, but it's only a few hours and I have the man cave with a heating or with a drying rack. So I'll just strip these clothes off, put them up there tonight and they should be all right by tomorrow. Or God forbid I could change my clothes. I also like when I do this, it helps before you've got this one all nailed in, I like to put one nail in anywhere you want in the stud. That's just as a reference mark so when I pop this back off it'll fit right back in there. In this situation it's not too big a deal but if for some reason you were starting in the middle or working with long or short boards or you're on a ladder or whatever sometimes it's nice to be able to put the board back exactly where it was when you measured everything. And it should fit right to the next stud. We'll put one nail in there. You know the first rule of ringworm, right? You do not try to learn anything from ringworm videos. But I'm making an exception. I'm only showing you how I'm doing it and not in any way saying this is how it should be done. After a couple years of building this stuff, I've sort of figured out the way I like to do it. I don't think there's anything standard, normal, correct about doing about putting a building up like this. But I don't really care what people think, except for me. If I'm having fun and it goes together like I want it, that's how I'll keep doing it. So we gotta continue that slope onto this one. If it's a short board, I just picked up this uh, six footer straight edge. You can do this, you can get the slope off of there and just trace it right onto here. This is a pretty long stretch, so I can only make a line to about here. I'll have to scoot this down and drop some more and scoot it down. And that's probably a little bit too far to just keep scooching and drawing from your first line as a reference. So I'm just gonna get the slope of this first board and then I'll transfer it onto the next one. I'll show you how I do that. I'm just gonna find where this is a whole inch. So that's four and a half inches there. Four inches here. So over this distance, you lose a half an inch. 51 inches. So every 51 inches you go, you gain it a half inch going that way. So starting right here is four and seven eighths. So we'll go 51 inches here, so right here, and that should be five and three eighths right there. Five, ooh, we just barely got enough board here. Ooh, this can be close. So this is where it met the first board. We'll pull this down to the end and just run it across that mark at 51 inches. All right, so that should be the right slope. So, I can't get my eyeball on there with my helmet on, but does it look pretty close? And then this is nice, just a scrap. I love using scraps up, so I'll just find something that'll fit there. And I'll use the straight edge just to follow that and draw the line right down. And then we gotta pop all those off and route them. Perfect. I'm 
remember, if you just got a chainsaw, you can totally do all this with a chainsaw. I did for the first year, year plus of stuff I was building out here, used only a chainsaw. Make sure it fits. Perfect. So I'll pop them all off and route them. The only reason I'm explaining any of this is that, you know, if anybody gets anything from watching my videos, I hope it's that it's totally fine to do whatever you want with your life. To take off into the woods, to become a bungee jumping instructor, try to be a professional skydiver, take lessons, whatever it is. N just not knowing how to do something is not a good excuse. But hey, if you can get a couple acres of land somewhere and you just want to go out and build yourself a cabin with a chainsaw, just do it. Chainsaw, mill, couple of hand tools, hammer, tape measure, chalk line, a lot of chalk, a lot of chalk. You can get shingles basically for free online. I don't know, just make it all up. You build yourself a cabin for, I don't know, a few hundred bucks if it's your goal to do it really on the cheap and not just go buy everything you think you have to have. You'll figure it out. Just go figure it out. Geez, stop watching this. This is garbage. Oh boy, man! If this was an outdoor uh, survival YouTube channel, you would have to, you'd have to turn it off right now, or you just couldn't respect yourself. Because I am soaked through, and I skipped lunch because I'm too cold. If I stop, I'll freeze, or I'll have to take all this off. It'll take me an hour to warm back up. I think at all the time I've been out here, I don't even think I have rain clothes. I might have a rain jacket somewhere. <laughs> Never use it. Chilly. All right, I think that's about as high as we can go without putting a window in. What do you think? Should we put a win? I think we should put a window in. I of course don't have the uh, top of the line materials to do this, but we'll make do with what we got here. Build your house with garbage. Tape that all up, throw a window in there. If I don't freeze first. Now, I just remember my dad left a chunk of uh, mocha bread or something. Oh, it's so good. You saved me, Pop pop this window in, then I gotta go dry out and warm up. Oh, nice. The red squirrels have been hanging out underneath here. Nice and dry, I guess. You guys have been watching along, you know that these, uh, one of these windows was used from the second-hand building store. Actually, well, yeah, two of them. The second one was new from there, and then one window I actually bought brand new because I wanted a big one. It was a couple hundred bucks, but I've got $250 under the windows for this, so not bad. Why are they going to make them so heavy? <clears throat> oh. oh, getting rained down again. And I didn't bring the right nails. Well, pop something in there to hold it for now. Ooh, starting to shiver. Okay. Holy bejesus. 
Check it out. It's becoming a real thing. Hey, I know I've said it seven times, but doesn't that siding look great? Can you believe you can make that from a tree with a chainsaw? I think it's kind of kind of amazing. Well, let's just head inside here and uh, see what the weather's like. <laughs> Look at that. It's pseudo closed in. No, no, don't don't look over here. See over here it's kind of closed in. All right, I'm done for the day. I'm butt cold. I got to go warm up, maybe get a hot shower. Of course, to get a hot shower, you got to stand outside where it's 32 degrees, but once I get my core temperature back up, it'll it'll feel good. I think I forgot to shower last night. That's all right. It was windy and snowing, so not a big deal to miss that one. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Come back next week. I think uh, here I go again trying to make predictions. I think this thing will be closed in next week. Got about one more day to finish those. I bet I have enough lumber to close in. Let's see. I guess we'll do this side next. Probably have enough lumber made to do this, and then. May have to do some chainsaw milling for a day or two, uh, use up that small pile of logs there. And that's good for this because this side doesn't have, it actually doesn't take any long ones. This would be the longest stretch right here, it's about seven feet or so. Well, that's not true. I guess I could use a couple of 12 footers there. But it's gonna go fast now. Get that closed in. I already have the uh, insulation, that takes no time at all. And then I might just throw a couple wall boards on this side. Yeah, I'm definitely going to start on that side. As soon as I get the wall boards up to four feet, I can put the heater in. Can't wait. Thanks for watching. See you next week.